you hand over to the peasant bishop, and they stole the program of the uh, of the Social Revolutionary Party and, and implemented it. Um, but the outcome couldn't be socialist. I mean, it, it helped them win the you know, win the civil war because they, you know, the peasants realized that they were fighting to defend the land that they that they'd gotten. If these you know, white you know, the whites had won the civil war, they'd, they'd have taken uh, taken the land from them. Um, I mean that. Basically, socialism wasn't on the agenda just in, uh, in, in Russia at, uh, at that time. So what was going to happen? Was, well, you know, it was going to happen. I mean, the, the, the landlords were going to be expropriated by the peasants, and uh, capitalism was going to develop in one form uh, or, or, or another. I mean, I mean, I'm just giving my personal view as to think what the best thing that could have happened would have been that they could have established some sort of stable can't use the word democratic now, can we? But some sort of <laughs> stable uh, <laughs> constitutional <laughs> situation where where, where uh, the workers could organise into unions and, and socialists and others could organise into 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 parties. But I think you, you put your finger on the main problem about Russia was it was overwhelmingly um, in a peasant country. I mean, you know, there were towns with and, and industrial centres with, with quite uh, advanced industry, in fact, but. The, I think the workers have only been about less than 10% of the of the population uh, of Russia. So, uh, you know, without a without a world socialist revolution, <coughs> nothing much could have happened in in Russia. You know. Do you think as well that um, capitalism has to has to be Yes, but not in every country. In other words, the, <laughs> we've got capitalism on a world scale now. There's some parts of the world which haven't, haven't yet reached capitalism. But I mean, you do have to have capitalism on a world scale uh, before you can have socialism. You can have, you're going to be established on a, uh, on a world scale. But um, to come back to Russia and North Korea, I mean, they, they didn't avoid capitalism. That, that's, that's our argument, that, that they managed to avoid what were violated uh, for 70 years in, uh, in Russia, private capitalism. But they didn't avoid capitalism in, a, in another form. They, they developed state capitalism, where, where you've got one big employer, um, you know, you have the state uh, doing what private, what private employers will, or big private employers for that matter, uh, you know, exploiting workers, working for wages and so on. So I mean, they, that's what they've got uh, still in, in, in North Korea. So they didn't, in fact, you know, skip capitalism. I mean, they, Maybe they skipped private capitalism, but they didn't skip uh, capitalism. That, that, would be, that would be our, our argument. Peter? Well, the point I was going to make there was that for capitalism to develop, they've got to have propertyless people, in other words, workers. So if land was going to go to the, the peasants and they were going to have land to, to grow things on, inevitably, if capitalism was going to develop, they would have to get these peasants off the land and make them propertyless. Mm -hmm. because Workers, uh, only, you can only multiply the workers to get rid of the peasants uh, from, from their method uh, of, of production. So, although all these things were going on in Russia at that particular time, <coughs> and these demands were going out for you know, more land for peasants and so on, uh, 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 for the developed capitalism, it's really a false hope they're giving them. Because they're going to eventually, if they're going to develop capitalism, they're going to eventually put them off the land. Uh, and, and in other words, if you go over the history of these things, the closure acts and all the rest of it, the island clearances and so on, that's what develops the, the working class it, and makes them profitless. And then capitalism obviously is a one way system today because it's been very successful in carrying out that process. There's lots of people in Africa, China, and, and Russia and all that, which at the time when Marx was. Uh, was, was talking about the development of capitalism. They, they were living in a capitalist society, but he could see that that particular process of developing capitalism must take place. So these sort of stories about you know, the, 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 the peasants going to own the land and that, well, they've been around it for long. 
Well, they didn't crash it, quite right. They had only for about 10 years and then started. You know, we started their forced collectivization and, um, and um, well, you know, a, lot, a lot of the presence of uh, central labor camps which also helped build some of the infrastructure of Russia. But you're right, I mean, it didn't last all that long, uh, it's uh, kind of their own uh, land in Russia. Jacqueline. Um, I've got two points. First of all, Russia has been very capitalism for well over 200 years. Um, in response to the man who spoke last, uh, capitalism has done its work it's supposed to do. It's covered the world. We now have in Africa um, people with mobile phones and no clean water to drink. Capitalism's done what it's done. The commodities are there, these useless bits of things that are not really needed when the things that we socialists would like to have, like clean drinking water, um, air that we can breathe, land that we can grow food on, etc, etc. The other part I'd like to say, I do get a bit irritated and I blame the Socialist Party for letting me know, don't waste time listening about Russia was um, socialist, don't waste time about China, Cuba, blah, blah, blah. Even though you don't put it like that, you actually explain why they were not socialist. But I don't, I get irritated when I hear Oh, what about this? What about that? Surely we should be saying now that um, the abolition of poverty, the abolition of um, war, the abolition of homelessness, the abolition of hunger, these are things that affect us because we have experienced capitalism. And we know among, with the great riches is the deprivation, the degradation and the absolute dire horrible poverty that goes with it and the rest of it, how we relate to one another in capitalist society with our property relations. Um, I feel that the Socialist Party should now, you know, talk in this language. The abolition of poverty. Everybody, I think, understands what you can get rid of poverty. The, the capitalist answer is always, we could do this if only we had the money. They got the money. Capitalism has given them the money. We could do this if only we had the money. We haven't got enough money. The abolition of the wage and salary system, the abolition of money, we had the solution. I know it sounds a bit trite and simple, but can't we kind of like, you know, elevate this a little bit more? And, you know, put the Russian Revolution and all the rest of it on the back burner. We'll, we'll get Danny to do an outdoor meeting because I'm starting to do that. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I don't think we should overplay the backward nature of, uh, of Russia in 1917. The, the book from the 1960s, the Carmichael, is it? Yeah, yeah. I think, Carm, uh, I think it's in the Carmichael book, he points out that uh, um, Russia as an industrial power was something like number four or five in the world. So, you know, it, it wasn't because Russia was such a, a vast country with such a, a large peasant population doesn't mean it wasn't also uh, an important industrial power um, in on the, on the world market. Uh, I think it, I think it's in the in the first chapter. You know, he makes he makes the point that uh, whereas in in Britain and uh, Germany and America capitalism sort of grew spontaneously, yeah. it was introduced into Russia, so they introduced them with the most up-to-date uh, techniques, so that the, the, the average size of a factory in Russia was much bigger, in fact, than the average size of a factory in America or in, uh, or in Britain. So, I mean, there's one factory, the Kutilov munitions factory, had about 30,000 30, workers, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge... Sizable town. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, in fact, the, 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 the Russian working class, if you like, was fairly developed, I think. I mean, some of them were uh, just in from the you know, uh, uh, 